Thank you, Tyler. Hi, everybody. My name is Maddie. I am an application engineer here at Kativ. I'm part of our Kativ support team. I recently graduated from Pennsylvania State University with a degree in biomedical engineering. I am an Autodesk certified professional and inventor for mechanical design. I'm also an Autodesk certified instructor for inventor. So as the title of this presentation implies, we are going to be showing you guys the simulation capabilities of Inventor Nastran and ANSYS. So I'm joined here by my colleagues from the ANSYS team, Joel and Snigda, so I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves. Thanks, Patty. Yeah. Hi, guys. My name is Joel. I'm a, a Kativ application engineer for the ANSYS structural products. I have about three years of experience working in composite blade design with G Renewable Energy. Um, and I have a master's in mechanical engineering that I got in 2019. Thank you, Joel. Hi, everybody. My name is Nikta. I am the senior CFD application engineer for the Kativ ANSYS team. I've been with Kativ for three years, and I specialize in multi-phase and heat transfer CFD. So I'm happy to join with the rest of our engineers to talk a little bit uh, about what NASTRAN and ANSYS can do for you. So with that, I'll pass it back to Maddie. All right, thank you guys. So to summarize our agenda for today, I'm first going to give a brief overview of what finite element analysis is and how it can be used to streamline the engineering design process. From there, we will, we will be doing a thermal stress analysis using Inventor, Nastran, and CAD. We will then use the same model to demonstrate how ANSYS can do this simulation. And now we will go ahead into our poll question that we have for you guys. All right, so we're just asking what simulation software are you guys using? So if you're using Nastran, ANSYS, CFD, if you're using something else, if you want to put it in the chat or the Q&A, you can let us know what other software you guys are using. All right, so it looks like a good bit of you are already using Nastram, as expected, and then not many ANSYS or Autodesk CFD and a few others. All right, thank you guys. That is good to know. Okay, so let's get into the FEA process. So why would an engineer be interested in using finite element analysis in the first place? So FEA is used to streamline the design process, it does so by allowing you to localize any problems with your design and thereby optimize the final product. It reduces the need for physical prototypes and physical testing. It allows for less errors and it saves time. So now we know how, now we know why we would use FEA, but what is FEA? It is a computerized method for predicting how a product will react to real world forces, vibration, heat, fluid flow, and other physical effects. It breaks on a real object into a large number of finite elements, such as little cubes. And these elements all have a mathematically defined relationship between force and displacement. These are then used to forecast the behavior of each element. The computer will total the individual behaviors to predict the performance of the object itself. So the slide here just breaks down what a typical FEA workflow would include. So first you see you create or import your geometry. You then pre-process the geometry by defining your physics and meshing, then solve and post-process your results. You'll analyze those results and decide what changes you may need to make to your design. And then lastly, you'll repeat the process until you end up with your optimized design. All right. So what is Inventor Nastran in CAD? It is our CAD embedded FEA tool. So if you have a subscription to the Autodesk product design and manufacturing collection, you have access to not only Inventor, but also Inventor Nastran. These are two separate installations, but Nastran is embedded within Inventor. So this is highly valuable for mechanical designers because of the convenience and the ease of use. 
The seamless integration of Nastran into Inventor means that you're always connected to your model. There will be no need to export or transfer to another system. So by leveraging the speed and flexibility of Nastran in CAD, you can create better designs earlier on in your engineering design process. So what can Inventor Nastran do? It uses Autodesk's Nastran Solver technology to analyze linear and nonlinear stress dynamics and heat transfer characteristics of structures and mechanical components. The Nastran Solver's accuracy is routinely tested against the NAFEM standards, and if you're not sure what that is, it is the International Association for Engineering, Modeling, Analysis, and Simulation Community. All right, so for our FVA today, we're going to be conducting a heat transfer and thermal stress analysis on this exhaust manifold you see here. To summarize what I'll be doing for this analysis in Nastran, I've listed my inputs. So I'll first be applying convection and radiation to the external walls of the manifold. I'll then be assuming the manifold's internal wall temperature to be uniform at around 1,000 Kelvin. So assuming a uniform temperature like this isn't the most accurate, as this isn't what will happen in the real world, but a mechanical design engineer like myself will likely not need highly accurate results. We just want to get a rough idea of where the model may fail to make the proper design changes and then pass it on to a design analyst from there. So the simulation will be comprised of two separate analyses. First, a nonlinear steady state heat transfer, followed by a thermal stress analysis. Our goal is to get a temperature distribution based on the applied thermal loading from the heat transfer analysis, and then use that temperature distribution to determine what effects it has on the part due to thermal expansion. So the ANSYS folks are going to be doing this same simulation using the same exhaust manifold you see here. But instead of assuming a single uniform wall temperature, as I mentioned, I'll be doing, Snigda and Joel will be using an internal wall temperature distribution from CFD, allowing for some results that are closer to the real world that a design analyst may require. So now I'm going to start sharing my screen so I can jump into Inventor Nastran and give you guys a quick demonstration. All right. All right, so here we have our model. I modeled this directly in Inventor, and then I just switched over to the Nastran tab to do the simulation. So the first thing I did was I chose what type of analysis I was going to do first. Here you see I did a nonlinear steady state heat transfer. I then chose what material I'm using and assigned the material properties. So for this, we're using structural steel. I then mesh the model. I can zoom in a bit so you guys can see what mesh I use. This works for my geometry, but depending on your geometry and what analysis you're doing, you may need to refine or coarsen your mesh. And then I went ahead and applied each of my loads. So here we have the uniform wall temperature that I applied to all of these inside surfaces within the manifold. Then we have convection with an ambient temperature of 323 Kelvin and a convection coefficient of 10 watts per meter squared Kelvin. And we have an initial temperature of 295 Kelvin. And lastly, I applied radiation um, with an ambient temperature of 323 Kelvin and a emissivity of 0.5. So then I'll go ahead and display my results for you guys to see. All right, so what you're seeing here is our temperature distribution. So you can see along the arms and the base here of the manifold, it reaches its highest temperature. And then around these connecting points, it varies a good bit and it reaches its lowest temperature on these outside surfaces. So from this, I then created another analysis, in which I did a linear static or thermal stress analysis. So I use the same mesh, the same structural steel material, but for this instance, I use that temperature distribution that I showed you from the previous analysis. 
I loaded that into this analysis, and that is what load will be applied to our manifold. The other thing I did for this one is I applied a constraint where you see these bolt holes, I applied fixed constraints just to make it as close to real world as possible. So it would take a, a good bit of time if I were to try and display the results here. So I actually have a slide prepared with my results that I will just show you guys now. So, so here you can see the Von Mises stress results. So if we look at those lighter blue areas, you can see it has a higher and more varying stress field. This is because there are areas where the wall is a bit thicker and our temperature distribution showed more variation there. So just to break this down a bit, um, uneven heating can cause added shear stress. So where we saw a variation in the temperature field from our heat transfer analysis, you will expect to see a variation in the stress field, which you can see here. So in this case, we can see that we generated pretty high thermal stresses. So if this were a concern for you in your design, you may want to make some changes to your model. You can change up the geometry, the material, the thickness, et cetera, and then rerun your analysis. This is how it's useful for the design process. And now I am going to pass it over to the ANSYS folks to show their simulation. Yep, uh, thanks Maddie for that demonstration. So uh, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, my name is Joel and I'm on the ANSYS, uh, I'm an ANSYS Structures Application Engineer here at Kativ. So Snigden and I will walk through the manifold problem just as Maddie did, but in ANSYS. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna take a second to talk about the capabilities of ANSYS since a lot of you might not be familiar with ANSYS. Uh, so on this slide, we have some of the technologies that are available in the ANSYS structure package, structures package. Uh, from the flagship ANSYS Mechanical to the Electronic Hardware Life Simulation Tool, ANSYS Sherlock. Um, this isn't a complete list, but it's some of the tools that I thought um, might be most interesting to you. If uh, you know, none of these tools are of particular interest to you, but you want to know what ANSYS can do for you, please ask. ANSYS does make it a mission to be the best in class simulation for as many technologies as possible. <clears throat> so I'm going to go through um, these lists, lists here right on the slide. Um, so starting with ANSYS Mechanical. ANSYS Mechanical will be the product we demonstrate today. It's a general purpose mechanical FEA solver uh, from linear and nonlinear static structural analyses, dynamic analyses, steady state and transient heat transfer, um, structural analysis with contact. Uh, I could go on, but uh, you can even do things like impact analysis in ANSYS Mechanical. But if all you're doing is impact analysis, you may actually want to use something like LS Dyna, which is another multi purpose solver that has its roots in nonlinear transient dynamic analysis, very popular for impact. Uh, one example of LS Dyna's capability is the stamping of sheet metal, which is, of course, a process with plenty of plastic and so nonlinear deformation. Uh, ANSYS forming is a separate tool that utilizes the LS Dyna solver to make sheet metal stamping analysis very easy. Um, but say your technology is a little bit more mechanistic in application. In that case, you may want to go with ANSYS Motion, um, which is particularly powerful at handling multi-body dynamic systems. Uh, lastly, um, the two technologies on the right, ANSYS Additive and ANSYS Sherlock, um, as their names imply or the description underneath them apply, um, they're very niche but very powerful tools um, to do with additive manufacturing and electronic life simulation. Um, so um, notably, this isn't all the structures package has to offer. So again, like if you see yourself asking if ANSYS even has a tool for your technology, please feel free to ask. <clears throat> um, but it's worth mentioning, and it's also worth mentioning that um, all the things I've talked about are in the structures package with the exception of Sherlock, which is also in the electronics package, but there are many other packages as well. And perhaps most noteworthy is the fluids package uh, because it's highly relevant to the manifold that we're going to discuss today. Um, and really interestingly, um, ANSYS products can, from different packages, can work together uh, to perform what's called a multi-physics solution, uh, which I'll let Singer go into the details of uh, right now. Thank you, Joel. Um, absolutely, right? Talking about multi-physics, um, one of the most unique highlights of the ANSYS platform 
is that it allows users to couple two or more independent solvers or external data sources to work simultaneously for doing your multi-physics analysis. For those of you who are not quite familiar with the term multi-physics, what it basically refers to is looking at the different physical aspects of a system altogether, simulating it all together to understand better the interactions between these individual physics systems. Now, the challenge with doing a problem like this is usually engineers are not experts in different fields, right? They have their own specialization. So what happens in companies is that you can do individual analysis in different segregated silos departments, and then you need to figure out a way for these individual analysis to talk to each other to transfer the data from one to another. So that can be a pretty tedious process. So how can ANSYS help you with that effort? Well, ANSYS Multiphysics allows you a single platform that a single engineer can use to set up individual analysis and then couple them all together to do your multiphysics problem. Um, ANSYS facilitates the easy sharing and transfer of data. So you can do a static data transfer, you can do a one-way coupling, you can do a two-way coupling, wherein both the physical systems are affecting each other's solution. And these methods are quite fast and accurate uh, because they've been developed over so many years. So on the right, you can see some of the possible connections within the ANSYS platform. You can couple the structure side with the fluid side to do something called fluid structure interaction. You can couple the fluids with the electromagnetics, the electromagnetics with the structural analysis. So let me go to the next slide over here that shows you some of the classic multiphysics applications in the industry. Um, over here on the left, you can see a helicopter with a double rotor blade. And because of the aerodynamic forces um, on this helicopter blade, these blades, you know, they undergo um, some sort of deformation. So what you basically see is a very strong coupling between the CFD and the structural field. Similarly, if you look at this um, tanks sloshing over here, give me just one second because I feel like um, my PowerPoint just hung on me. Uh, let me just stop. Can anybody, can Joel share your screen on this slide so that I can talk about it? Because my PowerPoint seems to have given up on me. Joel, can you share the screen? Oh, yes, sorry, I was on mute. Um, yes, can you see my screen now? I can't so okay. far. Uh, apologies, my Zoom will not maximize, so, oh, there we go, okay. There we have it, okay. Thank you. Can you switch to the presenter view, the slide view? Yeah, just thank you so much. Yes. So picking up from where we left off, uh, apologize for the interruption. So you can see in the second example, uh, we're doing a two-way FSI simulation for fuel sloshing in an elastomeric diaphragm tank. Because the tank body is not very rigid, you can see strong coupling between these structures and the fluid side of things. Similarly, on the top right corner, what you can see is an electrothermal analysis of a PCB. This is a very common application in the electronics industry. Uh, you have electrical traces and the joule heating from that in your PCB board. So you do um, you know, heat transfer analysis to look at the heat generated throughout the board. And then you can import those results in your structural solver to either look at the stresses or the deformation. What you see on your screen for the deformation picture is basically it has been scaled up for visual clarity, but this helps you understand the reliability of your electronic components. Similarly, if you look at the bottom right corner, um, Joel, can you hover over it and just click play? Um, yeah, you can see a bimetallic strip wherein the metals have different um, coefficients of thermal expansion. So when they're exposed to an external fluid environment uh, because of the temperature gradient, you know, they're going to suffer different amounts of bending. So that has been simulated quite easily with the ANSYS multiphysics software. 
Uh, and lastly, uh, there is this classic FSI benchmark case by Turek and Kron. Uh, this is a very challenging problem because there's a highly elastic material that is connected um, to the circular cylinder that you see on your screen. And this is located in a laminar and compressible fluid flow domain. Because of the surrounding CFD domain, you can see that the elastic object oscillates uh, quite strongly. Uh, so there's, again, high degree of coupling, and it's difficult to sort of converge this type of a problem. And uh, as you may imagine, because the domain is changing uh, as the flow progresses, the mesh also has to adapt uh, to such movements. And so ANSYS has been able to simulate this problem pretty well, and it matches accurately with the uh, solution that we find in the literature. Can we go to the next slide? So let's talk about the demonstration that we are going to do, right? We're going to do uh, a very similar example, uh, which Maddie did in her demonstration. We saw how we could do the thermal stress analysis of this exhaust manifold using the Nastra and FEA problem. Maddie assumed an internal wall temperature. Uh, you could also assume a constant heat load or a heat flux on that surface for getting a qualitative understanding of how the temperature is affecting your stress levels. And that might be sufficient for a design engineer who's just looking to uh, improve their design. But what if you want an analyst in your company to get higher accuracy, higher fidelity results, right? In that case, will the assumption of constant wall temperature or wall flux, will that be sufficient? Perhaps not. So this is where ANSYS can help you because instead of assuming a constant wall temperature, um, we can actually get the temperature distribution from doing a CFD analysis, a fluid flow analysis, and then coupling that with your structures analysis. So what we are going to be showing you, Joel and I, is the combined effect of the heat loads from the fluid flow problem using a CFD solver and then coupling that with the heat load conditions that we apply on external walls in the FEA solver, which is convection and radiation. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Excellent. So on your screens, you see a snapshot of something called ANSYS Workbench. It is your one-stop destination platform where you can build individual analysis, and then you can also connect them together to do a multi-physics coupling. For this exhaust flow problem, right, we're going to couple the structural solvers with the CFD solvers, but you could, you know, play around uh, with what type of systems you want to connect depending on the application you're studying. Um, on the left, you can see two different blocks for the structures problems, right? You can do a thermal analysis or a simple static structural stress analysis. Um, and then you also see the block for CFD that can be individually used for doing your fluid flow simulations. So you will see some connections on the slide, right? Links in blue and pink. Both the CFD setup and the structure setup have been linked to the last block, which is the system coupling block. So this is where the coupling between the different solvers is happening. Both these simulations are progressing simultaneously and you're looking for a convert solution. So what exactly is happening during the coupling? We are transferring data to and from, to and from the CFD and the structure solver. So the temperature variable is being mapped from the structure side to the CFD, and then the heat flow rate is coming from the CFD to the structures. So these data transfers are taking place for every coupling iteration until the solution converges. And what do I mean when I say the solution converges? I mean that the flow results and the structural results do not change anymore. Okay, so that's when you know you've reached a converged state. So if we can go to the next slide. So this slide shows you the setup on the CFD solver side. So notice that the graphic on the slide is slightly different from what Maddie showed you, because here we are focusing on the internal domain. So the internal flow domain is discretized and you see a mesh accordingly. Um, in the first picture on the top left, you can see the inlet boundary condition. 
The faces are highlighted in green. We assign a flow rate and an inlet temperature of 1200 Kelvin. Similarly, on the outlet boundary condition, wherein the outlet surface is highlighted in green, you can see that we've assigned zero gauge pressure. So this is all for the fluid that's flowing internally. Uh, along with these boundary conditions and the material properties, say for example, conductivity and viscosity of the flow, we can uh, do a thermal problem inside the CFD solver, and that will give us the temperature distribution. Most importantly, let us talk about the internal wall of the exhaust manifold, right? So in the third picture, you can see that surface highlighted in green. This is exactly where the coupling is taking place. So the temperature and heat flow data transfer that I talked about in the previous slide, this is the location where it's happening. As a result, you can see on the left, when we assign the thermal load for this wall, we tell it that the thermal load is coming from the system coupling. So this was the system coupling module that you see um, in Workbench in my previous slide. So this is all you would need to do on the CFD side, right? Once you set it up, you can then move on to setting up the structure side of things. So I'll let Joel talk about how to set this up on the mechanical end. Joel, I think you're on mute. Apologies for that again. Uh, yeah, so thanks for that, Snigda, on elaborating multi physics solution, on elaborating on multi physics solutions and setting up the fluids portion of the analysis. Uh, so, yeah, like Snigda said, I will go now go through the manifold problem within ANSYS Mechanical. Um, at this point, in the interest of time, the fluid structures interaction problem has been solved, uh, but I'll walk through the setup on the mechanical side to go through and go through some of the post processing. Um, so, First, we'll go through the boundary conditions and initial conditions. Um, as it seems like most of you are familiar with uh, FES solvers, I think you know what those are. But if you don't, um, they're essentially just um, an initial conditions or um, um, rules for the model, or um, you might say, uh, or also things like loads could be considered boundary conditions. So on the left here, under the steady state thermal branch, um, I have an initial temperature, which you'll see in the bottom left here is just 295 Kelvin, which if you remember from <laughs> chemistry class you've ever taken, uh, that's about room temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. Um, and this acts as essentially the temperature of the undeformed body. So of course, as the manifold heats up, it will expand and we'll have thermal stresses. So that baseline temperature is uh, relevant for that information for that reason. Um, now, so two of our next boundary conditions are heat dissipating boundary conditions, convection and radiation. They're both applied to this uh, external surface here. As you can see, as I click on the boundary conditions, uh, the surfaces that are um, experiencing the boundary condition are highlighted. Um, and these are so these are applied to the same surfaces, every external surface. Uh, the next boundary condition we have is the system coupling region. It's kind of difficult to tell because of the color. But if I go to the name selection um, of it, you can see the inside turns red. So this uh, system coupling uh, boundary condition is uh, essentially the interface that is going to interact with the fluids. So this is where data is, is read in from, from the fluid solver. Um, and so, um, of course, we solved this um, fluid structure interaction problem. And we have this temperature distribution as a result. And it's actually um, an interesting distribution, right? Because you'll see uh, here at the inlets, all three of these are inlets, um, we have a little bit of a warmer temperatures. And then as you go towards the outlet, you get cooler temperatures. Uh, so this is in contrast with the NASTRAN result, which was essentially a uniform distribution throughout the arm um, because a, a uniform internal temperature distribution was assumed. Whereas in our uh, multi-physics solution, we had that um, we had the solution coupled with the fluid solver, right? So as the fluid travels, um, as the hot fluid travels through the colder uh, manifold, it heats up the manifold and the manifold at the same time cools down the fluid. And so by the time the, the fluid gets to the to the outlet, it is is cooled down significantly. And um, so we'll heat up the manifold less in that way. 
Um, so this is an interesting result by itself, but of course, um, as analysts, we're also interested in whether this manifold uh, will fail. And so an interesting thing to look at would be um, the stress distribution due to the thermal stresses. Um, and I'll show you, I have it here already in, in the model tree, but I will quickly show you how you can add it yourself uh, just to demonstrate the ease. So imagine this wasn't here. We'd simply add a static structural analysis. And in our static structural analysis, we can easily import the uh, temperature distribution as a thermal load. And then we can we just need to add a couple supports uh, because in any uh, structural analysis, you need some supports um, to account for rigid body motion. Um, so I'll just do that. Um, and then all I have to do is add the von Mises stress to the scope. And then I would be able to simply solve this. But in the interest of time, I've solved it ahead of time. And I have just this duplicate um, branch right here. You can see they they are set up the same. And this is the, um, the thermal stress distribution that we get as a result. Um, and this is really cool. Uh, it just gives you a lot of um, really automatic post-processing capabilities. Um, particularly interesting, what, what was interesting to me when I first used the software was the generation of these GIFs automatically. Very easily, you can animate your results. Um, and you can also um, very easily generate uh, reports. So I'll just do a report preview just to show you how you can do that. In your report preview, you have your model. You have a bunch of information about the model, things like its volume, its mass, centroid. And then you have all the analysis information automatically generated in these tables for you. And then if you keep scrolling down, um, eventually you can get to the results summary. It tells you like the minimum temperature, the maximum temperature. Um, our fluid was 1200 Kelvin. So it makes sense that the maximum temperature on our body was less than that, and but still similar to it. And it will also add the stress results to the scope. Um, as you can see here, as those added in there too. So as you can see, there's a lot of very powerful and automatic post-processing capabilities within Ansys Mechanical. Um, they're very useful. So I've also got the results here on the slide that um, are a little bit more specific. And in fact, I've got the GIFs that I showed you how to generate, um, and they're very easily exported from Ansys Mechanical as well, um, and then put it into this PowerPoint. And so um, what is the value in getting this von Mises stress distribution? Well, a lot of you probably already know this since you work with simulation on a regular basis. Um, but this uh, this one in particular is actually a very interesting problem because um, as Maddie mentioned earlier on, um, the stress um, is related to the thickness. Usually whenever you have um, like a hot spot and a mechanical component, a safe bet is to just add material to it. But actually with the thermal stress, um, adding material could uh, increase the temperature gradient because you can imagine um, if this is this is sheet metal, um, essentially, and if there's a difference in temperature on one side from the other, that creates a shear stress because they um, they expand unevenly, and this could actually result in higher stress. So thanks to finite element analysis, we can, um, and of course our understanding of physics, we can realize that these hotspots can actually be reduced by reducing material. So you would just um, well, you would expect to save money uh, with reduced with reduced material costs, and you would also increase performance. So that's a very handy result. Um, otherwise, oh, and let me go back into presented mode. Apologies. Uh, we also have the CFD results. Um, so on the left here is the streamlines, and they're all colored by temperature. Um, and on the right, we have the uh, heat transfer coefficient contoured onto the body. Um, and what these will do is is help us realize if we pick the right material or not. Right. Okay, so we covered quite a bit here today. Uh, and I hope we've demonstrated that Nastran and ANSYS are both highly capable solvers. 
both tools have their value propositions. If you're a designer um, and CAD integration is hugely valuable for your process, you know, Nastran may be your software of choice. Um, but if you're an analyst or you're even an engineer or design engineer with uh, the need for higher fidelity analysis, an Ansys product may be right for you. Um, so with that, I think we'll go into the Q&A. Not sure how we're doing on time. Um, looks like we are fairly ahead of schedule. Uh, does anyone have any questions? If you do have questions, feel free to pop them into the Q&A or the chat. Um, we'll answer them wherever they are. Um, somebody on YouTube did have a question. Um, can you give me a dimensionless equation for fluid structure inter intersection? People will have to handle that one offline. <laughs> but uh, we have this person's contact info. Yeah, okay. we can definitely share a link uh, that shows all the equations that are being solved in the background for handling this type of interaction. And, you know, we can share additional resources with them. Yeah. Awesome. So if there aren't any questions, you can always feel free to, to reach out to us. We'll connect you with a simulation expert um, quickly. The Katif team works very fast. Um, otherwise, come back next week again for that 2023 profitability playbook. That's a, a great one to share with team members as well. And then we'll be here every Thursday. So um, thank you so much, everybody, for showing up. And uh, we'll continue to be a resource for you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Thank you guys. Bye. Thanks, everyone.